This is probably the most important lesson of this whole course about Nuxt. And this is probably the one you were waiting for, because Nuxt.js is really known for its options about rendering. So previously in the lessons, I was talking about how you can render differently your applications. And it's not related to Nuxt.js. However, Nuxt.js is providing many options that are very useful when you want to take care about the SEO of your application, for instance. So for this lesson, we are going to look at two documentation. The old one, the one about Nuxt 2, and then we are going to switch to the Nuxt 3 to see the difference. What is rendering? Well, we can look at a good definition about rendering on the new documentation, and we can see that here it's written, both the browser and server can interpret JavaScript code to render Vue.js component into HTML elements. So we can see that we can render an application from Vue.js component into HTML element on the client side and on the server side. This step is called rendering. Next supports both client-side and universal rendering. The two approaches have pros and cons that we will cover in this section. But before, let's get back to the old documentation and let's look at how it was written before. We talk directly about server-side rendered seats or server-side rendering, SSR, and static-side. Server-side render sites are rendered on the server each time the user requests a page. Therefore, a server is needed to be able to serve the page on each request. Static sites, which is the opposite of SSL, are very similar to server-side rendered application with the main difference being that static sites are rendered at build time. Therefore, no server is needed. The static sites, they are not built every time there's a request. They are built at build time, when you type npm run build, for instance. So it makes a big difference because on static site, it's difficult to uh, fetch the data and build your HTML document to deliver it to the uh, browser because when you are fetching the static website, it is already built. So the data is static there. So, for SEO reasons, what you want to have is that when the robot is arriving on your website, you may want to have all the data or the fresh data already fetched and completed, interpolated everywhere. For that, you will use SSR. And with Nuxt 2, we had the option SSR true, which we could put on nuxt.config.js or ts. So, when I go on nuxt.config.js, TS. If I want to put the SSR mode, the only thing that I have to type is SSR then true. And from there, my application now will be built on the server side. And it doesn't change something immediately on your application, but this new rendering mode actually change a lot of things in your data lifecycle. If we look at the new documentation again, we have some explanation. Client-side only rendering, out of the box, a traditional Vue.js application is rendered in the browser and the client. So the computer actually, not the server or the phone. Then Vue.js generate HTML elements after the browser downloads and parses all the JavaScript code. And this schema is explaining it very well. The browser downloads an empty HTML document, then the browser downloads and runs the JavaScript and the app is rendered and interactive. This is the client-side rendering. We see that the G JavaScript is not executed. We got pros and cons about this technique. The development speed is a pro. When working entirely on the client side, we don't have to worry about the server compatibility of the code. For example, the using browser-only API like the window object. Because yes, on the server-side rendering, you don't get any window object. So that's a problem. But however, it's a development speed feature that is a pro of the client side rendering. It's cheaper running a server at the cost of infrastructure. And we've got also other problems related to this. 
And offline, because code entirely runs in the browser, it can nicely keep working while the internet is unavailable. Which means that with the client side only, when you fetch the application, you don't need anymore to have actually internet running. In instead, if you are, uh, you are fetching some data, but it can work offline, which is amazing. The cons of the client side rendering is the performance. The user has to wait for the browser to download, parse, and run the JavaScript file. The server-side rendering is faster, and the client side uh, needs actually a good internet connection, and he needs also memory to make the work, to render the application in the browser. With the server-side rendering, it's faster. And finally, that's the main topic, with the client-side rendering, we have very bad SEO performances. And that is maybe why you are watching this video. This is because you would like to have good SEO performance on your next application. And with the client side rendering, this is very bad to do SEO. Actually, it's useless to try to do SEO because your page is not rendered at the right time. And as written here, we can see that as search engine crawlers, so the robot of Google, for instance, won't wait for the interface to be fully rendered on their first try to index the page. So if you have a SEO problematic on your project, you should do server side rendering. Then you get what we call universal rendering, client side plus server side. Well, it's actually the server side rendering. What happens is that when the browser requests a URL with universal rendering enabled, the server returns a fully rendered HTML page on the browser. So as I said to you, it's going to make the work for you and just send you the page. Whether the page has been generated in advance or cached and is rendered on the fly at some point, Nuxt has run the JavaScript code in a server environment. Making a static page interactive in the browser is called hydration. That's what we saw before. That's a good definition of hydration. So basically, this universal rendering is working this way. The fully HTML is sent to the browser and rendered. So the work here has been done about all the data completed on the uh, server side. Then the browser download and run the G JavaScript in background. Then a new step is coming on our cycle. Because at that time, we need to get this hydration step complete. And hydration, again, it's making a static page interactive in the browser. So when you use SSR, you might have some errors related to hydration. It's maybe because you didn't make the static page interactive in the browser. It didn't took time to complete, actually, the interactivity of your page. It's a very common error that you get when you are doing some SSR. So what are the pros and cons of SSR? Of course, it's the opposite of the client side. We got a search engine optimization pro, which is very big. Universal rendering delivers the entire HTML content to the page, to the browser, as a classic server application. Web crawlers can directly index the page content because at this step we have the hydration and then we got also the, the page content already rendered, which makes universal rendering a great choice for any content that you want to index quickly. Then, of, of course, you get the performance. User can get immediate access to the page content because browser can display static content much faster than JavaScript generated one. However, with SSR and universal mode, we've got some cones. And the first for me, it's the developer constraint that is written there. Server and browser environment don't provide the same APIs. And it can be tricky to write code that can run on both sides seamlessly. Of course, writing a HTML, CSS, Vue.js, React, whatever, on client side is a different behavior than writing it on the server side. When you choose to work on the server side, you will encounter maybe errors that you never encountered before, and you will have to deal with it. However, the next documentation is very well provided to deal with those problems. 
Also, it's a problem of cost. A server needs to be running in order to render pages on the fly. This adds a monthly cost like any traditional server. Of course, because you are not just delivering some pages, you are making your server running to make the work instead of the client's browser. So it has a cost, of course. However, the server calls are highly reduced thanks to the universal rendering with the browser taking over on client-side navigation. Why do we use uh, universal rendering? Well, for blogs, marketing website, portfolio, e-commerce website, and marketplace. Finally, by default, Nuxt uses SSR or universal rendering to provide better user experience and performance to optimize search engine indexing. What is new with Nuxt 3 and what was not in Nuxt 2, which means here, it's the hybrid rendering. Hybrid rendering allows different caching rules per route using root rules and decide how the server should respond to a new request on a given URL. So now basically with this hybrid thing, what we can do is that we can specify on each page what strategy we want to choose, either client side, either uh, universal rendering or server side rendering. But also what we can deal with is caching. And as I explained before, what we can do is to choose uh, when we want to cache our page and to put an interval between the time we want to have fresh data. Caching helps us to deal with this server that will build actually every time there is a request, your application and deliver it. Instead of uh, dealing with every request and every time building the app, what we can do is to cache our application. And of course, this hybrid rendering is possible because of Nitro, the new server engine that powers Nuxt 3. So please refer to Nitro to know more about caching. And we can continue on the root rules. Because previously, every root page of Nuxt and server must use the same rendering mode, client side and universal. Now when hybrid, we can specify on the root what we want to use. Using root rules, you can define rules for a group of Nuxt root, change rendering mode, and assign a catch strategy based on root. So down there, we've got an example with define Nuxt config. So you understood that it happens there in our nuxt.config.ts. So what I can do instead of having this SSR true is to have a root rule entry. And in this root rule entry, which is an object, I can specify the name of the root, the URL of the root, which is related there on a page. And I can specify if I want to use server-side rendering or not, if I want to use some header, for instance, or if I want to have just static. And I can also work on headers with redirect and status code and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So with these root rules, we can specify with these options, okay we can specify which type of rendering we want to use. And that's the new thing with Nux3, this hybrid possibility that we didn't get before. We had to put on the entire application that we want to uh, use SSR or just static. Now we can use both. <laughs>